Hi, everyone. This is Emily from the Classy Little Podcast. I wanted to apologize for ending the podcast so abruptly after a very long hiatus. And thank you to all our listeners and supporters. It was really an amazing year of podcasting that we'll never forget. This quick announcement episode is brought to you by Audible for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or... Wait, no, sorry. Force of habit. Anyway, you can still catch James on the Unskippable podcast with my husband, Mark, where they review one new album every episode and make each other listen to an old favorite without skipping it. You can find information at unskippablepod.com. And you can find me on my new podcast called The Story Behind, which is similar to the Classy Little Podcast, but it's much more specific. The format is shorter than the Classy Little Podcast. There's no wine and cheese, unfortunately. But then again, one of the reasons Classy Little Podcast is no more is that I haven't been able to enjoy wine or certain cheeses for about four months now. And I have another five months to go without them. But despite what other podcasters may say, babies aren't podcast killers. But doing shorter episodes means I'll have less editing and production work as well as a chance to put out two episodes every week. So I can leave you here with a final farewell from the Classy Little Podcast, and you can skip ahead to your next podcast, the one you found to replace us. It's okay. I understand. Or you can keep listening for the first episode of my new show, The Story Behind the Theremin. If you like what you hear, please subscribe on iTunes, Google Play Music, Stitcher, or your favorite podcast app, and find more information at thestorybehindpodcast.com. Cheers! This is the first episode of The Story Behind, a podcast exploring the extraordinary history behind ordinary things. I'm your host, Emily, who you may recognize as one of the former hosts of the Classy Little Podcast, where we explored fun facts, history, and trivia about a different topic each week while enjoying wine and cheese. The Story Behind is similar in many ways to the Classy Little Podcast, But I skip the wine and cheese and focus on one object, person, or idea every episode and the story behind it. And I wanted to thank listeners of the Classy Little Podcast for sending so much encouragement and support, especially Nick from the Epic Film Guys podcast. Had it not been for him, I wouldn't be behind the microphone again. So I hope you enjoy. If you haven't heard the word theremin, You've certainly heard the instrument. That eerie sound, like a string instrument being played in a nightmare, used by Foley artists to create an alien ambiance in movies. The theremin may be one of the weirdest sounding instruments, and to watch someone play it is like watching a wizard performing an intricate spell or a conductor in front of an invisible orchestra. In this episode, we'll be talking about the invention of this instrument, the inventor-turned-spy, Leon Theremin, and how Hollywood would forever form the association in our minds with science fiction movies in The Story Behind the Theremin. The era surrounding the 20s may conjure up images of flappers, speakeasies, and the Great Gatsby, but Leon Theremin's version of the 19-teens and 20s was a bit different. He was born and raised in Russia and was in college studying physics and playing the cello during the First World War. Many of his classmates had been drafted, and he was able to progress quickly through his studies because of this. When his time to serve had come, he was so advanced in his studies, he was able to avoid the front lines and work as a scientist during this time. He began using electromagnetic fields to study the density of gases during the Russian Civil War. I know, this sounds a bit boring and scientific, but I promise you it gets better. There are spies involved. The machine he invented, a voltmeter as it was called then, would send sounds of different frequencies through his headphones. Being trained as a musician for a number of years prior, he realized he could make music by moving his hands ever so slightly between two electromagnetic fields around the two antennas of the machine. With some adjustments and practice, using one hand for pitch and the other for volume, he perfected playing what would become known as the theremin in 1920, the first instrument that could be played without touching it. 
инструмент терминвокс – это первый инструмент такого типа. Это песенно-голосовой инструмент. The recording you're hearing is Leon Theremin himself. What he said in the beginning, in Russian, is translated to electrical musical instrument, Theremin Vox, is the first instrument of a kind. It's song-like voice light device, where you can control your melody by influencing the electromagnetic field around it. When he showed his design to Lenin, Vladimir Lenin, not the Beatle. He was so impressed he sent Theremin and his Theremin on a tour of the country to show off the instrument. Lenin wanted to spread the news of what could be done with electricity. After all, one of his favorite maxims was socialism equals social power plus electrification. Theremin went over to the United States in 1928 to debut his new instrument and to hopefully sell it to a company to mass produce. When Theremin got to the U.S., RCA was interested in the instrument and had him sign a $100,000 contract one month before the stock market crash of 1929. Because of the crash, not many people could afford to buy a theremin, not to mention how difficult it was to learn. One day in 1938, theremin vanished, leaving his wife and his business failures behind him, only to reappear years later in Russia after the fall of the Iron Curtain. Stories vary as far as the reason he left America. Some say he was homesick or wanted to escape debt, and others say the NKVD a predecessor to the KGB, was responsible for kidnapping him. Back in Russia, he was arrested and in prison for reasons that are still unknown. He admitted at the age of 95 that debuting the instrument had been an excuse to come to America as part of the development team working on a Soviet surveillance device. He also admitted that once he installed the device in a government building... All he heard were boring conversations and no government secrets. Had he lived to put that device on a bus with Donald Trump and Billy Bush, he may have gotten something a little more interesting. The theremin was all but forgotten until Hollywood began using it in soundtracks to science fiction movies in the 50s and 60s, such as The Day the Earth Stood Still and Alfred Hitchcock Spellbound. After that, there was a resurgence of popularity of the instrument, and a man named Robert Moog began selling make-it-yourself theremin kits. Moog is now known as the man behind the Moog synthesizer, but the theremin is still one of the company's best-selling items. You may think that instrument you hear in the Beach Boys' Good Vibrations is a theremin, but it's actually an electrotheremin, an easier-to-play alternative created by Bob Witzel and played by Paul Tanner. Jimmy Page uses a theremin-like instrument during the solo of Led Zeppelin's Whole Lot of Love, as well as throughout No Quarter. Howard, did you solve the install time problem yet? No, it's a little the theremin tricky. nowadays is still considered one of the most unusual instruments. In an episode of The Big Bang Theory, Sheldon Cooper is seen playing it. What are you doing? Playing the theremin. <laughs> no, I mean, what are you doing with a the theremin? <laughs> playing it. <laughs> I've loved the theremin from the first moment I heard the original Star Trek theme, and it's been killing me that it just sits in my closet gathering dust. He says he has enjoyed it since hearing the original Star Trek theme. But that theremin sound is actually renowned soprano Luli Jean Norman, but many mistake it for a theremin because of its eerie sound and high pitch. If you're familiar with Sheldon's character on the show, you would know that it was a major goof that Sheldon wouldn't know that piece of trivia about Star Trek. But are we really going to poke holes in the plot lines of the Big Bang Theory? 
Remember when Raj couldn't talk to girls for the first few seasons? I'm just saying. Information for this episode was sourced from moogmusic.com, cbsnews.com, bbc.com, NPR, and the book Theremin, Ether Music and Espionage by Albert Glinsky. For links to these sources and more, visit the show notes at thestorybehind.lipsyn.com. Lipsyn is spelled L-I-B-S-Y-N, and it's where this and a lot of other great podcasts are hosted. You can follow on Twitter at Story Behind Pod or subscribe on your podcatcher of choice so you'll never miss an episode. Thanks for listening.